Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the end of July technical fireside chat with Candy. Um, today we are going to be talking about a few updates from Polycom. Um, just to introduce you to everybody on the call, my name is Simon Legood. Uh, I'm the senior technical trainer here at Candy. We also have Sarah Hughes, who's the senior vice president of North American Sales. And then we have two guests with us today, uh, Dave Finney and Stephen Chen from Poly, uh, and they're going to be working with us as we kind of go through the presentation today. Um, real quick, just wanted to remind everybody, if you do have any questions, feel free to use the questions or the chat function built into GoToWebinar. Sarah and I will be monitoring those throughout the presentation today. Um, if you have questions, put them in there, and then we will uh, find a time to be able to ask and answer those questions for you guys as well. Um, you are all muted, so the questions is going to be your best bet to, to get a question over to our team. Um, without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Sarah, who's got a quick update from the Candy side uh, before we get into the Polycom presentation. Thank you, Simon. Yes, um, so <clears throat> we recently upgraded uh, the Candy UCAS uh, administration to 54.1. And if you hadn't already opened a case and uh, aware of this, um, we actually made a change in how device key button provisioning works with the Polycom or now Poly uh, devices. Previously, well, there are two things. There's device parameters, which is a more technical, um, you know, similar to the configuration files that you would work with directly into a Polycom or a Poly device. Uh, but we also have device keys, which was a button GUI layout. And we still have it, but um, there was kind of a mismatch in how those were provisioned. Whenever you use the button GUI layout device keys, uh, what it would do is it would force you to create the button and soft keys as well in sequential order. And so if you wanted to you know, have a nice layout and kind of space some of your buttons out, the workaround to that would be to have to create um, dummy keys for these. So, um, and it had to do with the indexing that we used in device keys uh, early on. We kept um, that going, but in 54.1, what we ended up doing is we reset that and made it to where it was more similar to what we do in device parameters. But the impact of that, which was not seen before the upgrade, um, was that it would re-index everything that you had done in device keys. And so, especially if you use both device keys and would go into device parameters and make changes. So, um, what happened in 54.1, again, it re-indexed those um, and kind of realigned them, but it would the result of that, that your customers complained about, if, if you've seen this issue, is that the buttons no longer worked. And if you had the ability to look in using the uh, Poly device um, management, you could look at the logs and see there were errors in that. And so um, we have, um, we, we saw this with voicemail transfer buttons, uh, hot desking, park and retrieve, that kind of stuff. And so what the resolution is, if you'd like to make it go back to the way it was, I'm putting together a bulletin that's going to go out within the next hour. Had to fine tune it and get everything squared away on it. But um, what you have to do is go into device parameters and we have a, an Excel spreadsheet, which is basically a CSV file of those parameters that will put those indexes back for you. So you don't have to do it on a phone by phone basis. You can do it at the SMB layer or you can do it the partner layer and push down to all of your partners if all or all of your downstream customers if they are all affected. Uh, but again, uh, apologies for this. We didn't realize, um, you know, how widespread it was going to be. I will tell you the upgrade was the 29th of May, 
And if you uh, begin to see this a few, you know, a week later, whatever it is, and it seemed like it was spreading, it's because those phones every week will go and pick up their config again. And so you may have seen that, oh, well, this customer, it didn't affect. And okay, now this customer, it affects uh, the next customer because they went and got their config file again uh, during that week. So all of the polycom, poly devices, every week will go pull their config, but it's not all on the same day. So they kind of stagger when that happens, depending upon the last time they pulled it. And so if you have not seen the issue so far, uh, it could be uh, that you're not affected. It could be that you know, maybe there was, or you're now seeing it after this, maybe they just had not come online and that phone was not connected to the internet, uh, that kind of stuff. But again, apologies for this. Um, we did not find it in testing, but we very quickly, uh, oh my gosh, you know, what, what's going on, realized that it was a wide scale thing. And uh, we have made it so that device keys now allow you to give some space between device buttons and soft keys and be and act more like device parameters and so um, but we didn't realize that that change was going to adversely impact those that were already programmed so again the support notice will go out today and we'll also send a copy of it um, with the email replay to this so that you're able to um, see that in both ways. And of course, we want you to forward that on to your support and implementation personnel um, if they see this effect. Again, it's only on the Polycom Poly devices. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. If there's any questions, obviously, um, you, know, you can reach out to us, uh, open a, a case, at uh, supportportal.candy.io and I'll put that in the chat but just didn't want that to distract from the update that we're doing here so I'll put that in um, again supportportal.candy.io and you can open a case and or chat uh, with our support engineers thank you I'll give it back to you then Dave all right I am um, oh, oh there we go geez my screen went blank and I lost you there for a minute. So are my slides moving now? Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes they are. Not good. So the slides, did the slides move? Yes, they did. It's yours. Yes. I am uh, obviously technically challenged this morning. So hey, thanks for joining everyone. We, we appreciate you spending your time with us today. And we're gonna do a, a flyover of what we are offering with Poly and now HP Poly. And we'll go into a little bit about the business changes uh, first. I mean, I'm sure many of you heard that Poly got bought by HP and we'll talk about that briefly, but wanna do a flyover of the product set that's available on, on the, uh, the UCAS platform from Muskyvera. And so we'll do that. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the chat as we go along. Uh, Stephen Chen, who is the subject matter expert uh, for uh, for the UCAS platform from Poly, will be able to answer some of those if they're Poly specific. Don't want to do too deep of a technical de uh, dive today and be high level. But if you have any questions, you can certainly uh, get a hold of us and you will get this deck. So there's a lot of detail in the deck. And like I said, we're going to fly through some of this stuff because there is a lot of detail in the deck. So uh, in November, November 1st, we officially became part of HP. So we were Plantronics and we were Polycom, then we, became, we merged and we became Poly. And then November 1st, HP bought us. So we're now HP Poly. The brand naming of the phones and all of our products will stay the same, so we'll still be known as Poly, uh, but we are part of the, the greater HP. And the reason that they did this is that both companies have uh, various strengths. We're strong on the endpoint side, the camera side, the phone side. HP is strong on the compute side and we all have uh, uh, remote management, cloud management capabilities. So we believe that by coming together we're going to be able to create this or we can and we are creating a great hybrid work portfolio. We kind of shifted the focus of our roadmap uh, at, at the start of COVID to hybrid work. We understood that that was what was going to be happening is people were going to work in the office, people were going to work at home, and people were going to work between the home and the office. So uh, we knew that there'd be a lot of hybrid work. So that's the focus of what the companies are doing, a heavy focus on video like we're doing right now, and uh, headset uh, capabilities. Uh, we want to make sure that we have really good solid headset support, and then we'll keep the phone lines uh, uh, going uh, that you're, you're well aware of. 
this is what we believe and perceive that the, the world will look like from an HP Poly perspective. So you can see we have some HP products that we can sell and we have Poly products that we can sell. And as the company continues to, and as we continue to merge as a company into the HP world, right now we're in kind of like day one status, but we're moving to day two where all of our systems are being uh, moved to HP. And then eventually, uh, what we've been able to do on the Poly side, what we'll be able to do on the Poly side is start to sell the HP compute devices. So from your Poly reps in the service provider space with with Skyvera UCAS, you'll be able to start buying uh, through us uh, computers, printers, things like that that your customers might need in addition to our video products and our phone products and our headsets. So what we what we've been focusing on is the future of work. So what does work look like? in the future, not just today, and, and we call it being future ready at HP. So what does future ready look like? So we're delivering the future work. So what does that look like? Well, from, from our perspective, you got people, and we're trying to figure out, and what we've done a really good job of with, within the poly world is we've created this idea and notion of personas. So we have six different personas that we work on, and we look at, and we've taken a lot of surveys across the industry over the last decade, and we focus on these six personas. And what they tell us is different work styles, different places that you work, different different ways that you want to wear a headset, different devices that you want to use, different types of computers that you want to use, different type of cameras that you want to use. And so we we try to build our product based on all of this research. And we'll dig deeper into the product later, but really what we're trying to figure out, what we're trying to see is, Okay, why is this not moving? There we go. We want to be able to figure out who people are and what their spaces are. So work is no longer about a place that you necessarily go. It's where you are. I have people right now, I have two of my team are on vacation in Europe and they're still working. Uh, they check in with their emails in the morning on their cell phones and they have headsets with them so if they do need to take a call. And I don't really approve of them working when they take a vacation, but they're, they're doing that. And we all do. I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody. But the idea is that they can move around the world and still be in touch and still be working. So that's that's part of what we look at is what is a space? Is it in the office? Is it in the home? Is it in the home and in the office? Is it in the airport and on the golf course, on a boat in the Sea of Cortez? You know, wherever it is. And we're trying to build product that will allow us to uh, to cover those types of uh, work scenarios. So it's no longer about a place that you go. It's about what you do and who you are. All right, so that's what we're doing. That's how we build our products, and that's what we're, that's what our philosophy is. Is as the two con, uh, joint companies is really work from home and hybrid work, and then providing the best equipment that we can to support the type of use cases or personas that our customers have. So let's go into a voice update. We'll we'll get into the stuff that's really supported on your platform now, or on the Skybear platform now. So this is the the current voice lineup for Poly. And you can see starting up in the upper left hand corner the CCX phones. We don't see too much opportunity for CCX phones in the open SIP space. They're mainly a touchscreen phone. Most of our customers would use a button phone like the Edge E series, which is brand new uh, for us. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Uh, we have the Edge B series, which is a lower cost uh, phone, which again is it's not even on the Skyvera platform. The CCX is. The Edge Bs are not on the Skyvera platform, so not something that we would sell. Uh, we do have a new ATA coming out. You, uh, there, we've onboarded the old AT ATAs onto the, the Skyvera platform, uh, but um, we have a new one coming out. And a lot of the changes that we make are because of supply chain. So quite frankly, we had some supply chain issues with the chipset in the old ATAs, so we had to abandon those, and we've got a new one coming out in August, and that'll hopefully end up on the Skyvera platform for those that use the, the ATAs. In the middle there, we see the, VZ, the Poly VVX phones. That's kind of the flagship phone set that we've been we've been uh, working with. Uh, the Edge E are new phones, so they're gradually making their way into the market. We also have a wireless in-building wireless uh, solution, a DEX solution called our Poly Rove series. Uh, we have a new entry level that's come out as well. So with the Rove series, you can go from you know one phone to hundreds and th or thousands of phones actually on, on, a, on a DEC network if you'd like. And then of course we have the conference phones, the traditional conference phones. So where we would focus with the Skyvera folks and Skyvera customers are these particular um, these particular handsets. We don't want to. We we're not going to see much CCX and we're not going to see much Edge B out there in, from our phone lineup. But these are the ones that that we'll want to focus on primarily the VVX and the Edge E. So let's look at the Edge E really quick. 
What we're trying to do is we, we, we're trying to change the experience on the phone and just make it a better experience without having to put a burden of anything off on uh, Skyvera or other open SIP uh, platforms. So a lot of these things that we're seeing here are built right into the phone and their phone functions like NFC or uh, the, the ability to quickly pair a headset, a poly headset to a phone or a mobile device. And we'll get into all of this in a little bit more detail. And then Stephen, if you have anything to say as we go through this, please, please jump in. But really what we're trying to do is create the best user experience. And you can see the phone looks pretty slick. It is onboarded onto the, uh, the Skyvera platform. So it is available for sale. Uh, and we'll and I'll show you a I'll show you a chart as we close this off. Uh, I'm trying to keep track of time here, uh, but nice looking phone. Did some really nice things to it, and it really changed the uh, the experience. That we'll talk about where we get into that. So new features for us on this phone: uh, Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi, and NFC. So there are some applications for NFC. You have to build them, but the phone has NFC capabilities. So you can walk in and tap your mobile phone against the uh, against the the phone and against the edgy and completely switch from a mobile device and now you're using the handset and the or the speaker phone or the dial pad from the edgy as opposed to the mobile phone which is really nice because we add some additional options like noise block and acoustic fence which would quiet your environment uh, if you use the uh, the poly handset with your mobile phone uh, noise block ai uh, that gives you the ability to get rid of uh, tcap or, or uh, oops sorry i don't know what happened uh, um, well, something's recording me, or I'm seeing recording. All right, I'm just gonna keep going. So, uh, so we have some support and diagnostic tools that are in there, and then we also have a, an improved UX uh, feature capability, and then it's microband protected. So we'll, we'll get into some of these details in the next few slides, and get you're gonna get all these slides. So uh, don't worry about um, uh, the content because you will get the slides. And we did microband as a uh, as and what microband does for you is it it eliminates uh, uh, germs. It really does kill germs on on the phone. It kills the micro micro germs on the phone. So so as we went through COVID and we went through some of that, uh, there was a, an opportunity to to make some improvements to the phone. The phone plastics. This is an exclusive with Poly. You won't find this on anybody else. But it's kind of interesting and, and, and cool to think about. We don't think about it as much anymore as we did two and three years ago, but it is a pretty cool functionality. Here's the phones themselves so you understand the model numbers and what we're doing. We have the Edge E100, which is a two-line phone, basically designed for the, the um, uh, lobby space, uh, hanging on a wall in a store, just a quick way to make a phone call or gain entry into a building. We have the 220, E220, which is a two-line phone. Uh, both of the phones have NFC and one and one USB, but what happens on the 220 is it adds Bluetooth, internal Bluetooth uh, capabilities. If you look at the 300, we have three model numbers of the 300. We have the 300, the 320, and the 350. And what they do is the 320 adds Bluetooth and the 350 adds Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, to the phone. So if you're looking for a Wi-Fi phone, you would start at the, on the low end, you would start at the Edge E350. The 400, you can see, you can kind of get the, the way we name these or number these now. Anything with a 00 is pretty blank and generic. Anything with a 5 is going to have a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on it. Uh, so that's why you'll see the 320 with Bluetooth only. And, and we'll probably make some changes to this lineup. Uh, where where we maybe eliminate some of the Bluetooth only phones and we go strictly Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on both, but we'll see how that works out. So the E500, same thing, uh, 550 has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and then we have an expansion module that works on the 450 and the uh, the 550. And you'll notice here that we do have a an expansion module built in on the 450, uh, so you have an additional six lines that you can get. So you can get uh, uh, 14 lines that are visible on the 450 with this little baby expansion module. And then you can plug an, an, an additional two expansion modules into it if you want. So here's quickly, really high level, really fast, just a, a little bit of more detail on the 100 and the 220. Don't want to spend time here. Again, you will get this handout. Nothing really, uh, really exciting here except for the Bluetooth pairing. Uh, but you can see the difference in the uh, the architecture and the ID from the old VVX lines and the and the poly lines that you're familiar with, with the whitish color and the more rounded curvy edges and some of the 
the little bar at the top that tells you whether you're on a call or available. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the screen changes uh, that we allow as well as we go through this. The 300, nice looking phone. Again, you've got you know uh, the 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 cream color and the more rounded edges. And you also have this uh, this this green bar that or this green uh, halo that goes all the way around the screen. And that halo lets you know whether you're busy or or available, whether you have a message, etc. And then the 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 buttons. 450, uh, a little bit bigger screen. You can see that there's a line difference. There's eight lines on the 350, and there's eight plus six lines on the 450 because we do add this expansion module, a uh, built-in expansion module with six additional lines. And you can use those for a variety of things. It could be speed dials, it could be line keys. Uh, so they're there and available. And then the 550, a little bit bigger screen, uh, no built-in uh, mon, no built-in uh, uh, expansion module like the 450 but it is a 12 line phone out the door. And uh, then you can have uh, two expansion modules uh, connected to it as you can with the, uh, the 450. So um, really nice phones, uh, really nice looking phones, really nice lineup. Here's the, here's the Edge e, uh, EM, and you can see you can have one or two, uh, you can have one hooked to the 450 and you can have a couple hooked to the, the 550 so you can, so you can increase your, uh, your uh, line footprint, if you will, and all of these page through. So there's a, there's a, if you can, you can page through, there's 22 lines. Uh, there's three pages of 22 lines on these expansion modules. So you can get quite a few uh, lines uh, visible on your expansion modules. So made native Bluetooth. So what we're able to do with the Bluetooth is we're able to pair a headset like a Voyager Focus 2 or a 4300. When you come in, you simply hold the hold the headset close to the phone and it pairs. Really kind of cool. You can do the same thing with your mobile phone like I was talking about before. You walk in, you pair your mobile phone, and now what happens is your, your phone directory actually, your mobile phone directory actually shows up on your Edge E as well. So your Edge E becomes the phone visual and audio interface for your mobile phone. And again, what it does is it brings you the ability to use some of the noise block and acoustic fence capabilities so it quiets the call where your mobile phone doesn't have acoustic fence or noise block capabilities in it. So the contact, like I said, the contact, uh, the contact uh, uh, mobile phone contacts show up in your on your edge phones when you pair over Bluetooth. So you can see there's a, in your directories, you can go to mobile contacts and you can actually dial uh, from your mobile phone from the edge E. Another thing that we've added is, uh, well, a, a few things that we've added. We'll talk about these in a little bit more detail, text-to-speech, customized fonts, uh, diagnostics, et cetera. But this is, uh, this is just a summary screen of what we talked about before in words a couple of, a couple of screens ago. So the Thoughtful UX, uh, we're able to manage calls from a central screen and still see the labels. So what you see around here is that internal to in between all of your labeling, is where you're actually going to get your your real work done. So when a call pops up, you're not blocking out everything else on the sides of the phone. Um, we have the visible halo, which we talked about, and we talk, and we talk about this designated pagination button, dedicated pagination button. You can do actually four pages of, of pagination, where you can see on these line on these line key see these lines key screens. I said it there. I said it. It got it out you can actually page through four of them. So on an eight port phone, you would have essentially 32 keys that you can manage just on the phone itself using pagination. Then if you add an expansion module to the 450 or the 550, that pagination goes away and it moves over to the expansion modules. But there's a variety of ways to get a lot of keys visible. So when you see a phone that has eight line keys on it, have no fear, you can page through four pages of those. So we do have text-to-speech capabilities, works pretty well. So if you are having, you know, if you have any folks with hearing impaired or you just want to, to turn it on, you can see that you'll see an incoming call from Ellen Harper and it'll, it'll alert it as long as it's ringing. Yeah, so you'll be able to hear the ringing and you'll be able to hear the text-to-speech as well. We can change the font size. So you can go from smaller, as you see on the left, to larger and bolder, as you see on the right, which helps old guys like me uh, that have a problem seeing. So it's nice to have a uh, have a, a bigger, uh, uh, bigger and and a more bolder uh, presentation on the phone of the names. 
We also have color changes. Uh, for, there's a lot of uh, color blindness out there in the world. And we're actually to, to uh, one in 12 men are colorblind. I may be colorblind, although I think I see colors. Uh, but my wife, when I get dressed in the morning, she goes, are you really going to wear that? So maybe I'm colorblind, I don't know. But there is a lot of color blindness out there. And so what we try to do is we try to add the, the ability to change the screen background so that it would, uh, it would help compensate that for people that uh, have difficulties uh, with color blindness. And then we talked a little bit about uh, quality and noise management. So on the phones, we have NoiseBlock AI. So NoiseBlock AI, and I have, I'm speaking to you on a Poly P15 camera, and I have NoiseBlock AI too. So if you hear me tapping my fingers or tapping, you really can't hear that because NoiseBlock AI is listening for everything that's not voice and it's not allowing it into the stream. And we also have acoustic fence capabilities. So we have that on the phone. And we also have it on, uh, and we also have acoustic fence capabilities where if I'm using a headset or a handset, it blocks all the noise around me as well. So if my little dogs start to bark at somebody walking down the street, you will not hear that because of uh, acoustic fence on this camera that I'm talking to you about. And if I was on a handset and I was on a headset or the, the handset on my phone, you would not be able to hear it either because of the those capabilities. And then with noise block, you're not getting all that ancillary noise like you know you're rattling a potato chip package where you're on a call or uh, you're clicking on your keyboard noise block blocks those and keep those from going into the call so really uh, slick uh, capabilities on the phone itself and that noise block works with when you're on speakerphone on the edge so it's blocking all that noise as well as working with the handset and the headset so if you have any questions on that, but this this is the quietest handset you'll have on your desk. And it's really well, it works really well in the home environment where you never know what's gonna happen. You never know what garbage truck's gonna go down the street or what landscaper is gonna be doing something and it's blocking all that noise from getting into your call. And then I mentioned uh, the antimicrobial uh, benefits of microbands. So really just keeps the, the phone cleaner. And these phones are, you know, you're able to wipe these phones down with, uh, with sanitary, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that stuff? Stuff that sanitizes phones and, and, and handsets and use on your hands. So hand sanitizer, things like that. You're able to wipe them off uh, anyways, but you've got this extra level of protection with microband and it does kill uh, micro germs uh, within about 24 hours and we you can see from the picture on the left that there's a bunch of germs on the phone and then with the microband protection that circle on the uh, the right uh, very few are left so don't touch those while you're using your phone so uh, easy to deploy phone uh, one of the things that we've always had issues with I think most phone 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 manufacturers do is the ability to upgrade quickly and and download software so we've We've given the we've made that process faster and easier to get phones actually online. And then we do have computer audio connect. So the ability to uh, Ethernet connect your phone to your PC and use your phone's handset, headset, and speaker phone as your PC's handset, headset, and speaker phone, if you care to do it that way. Uh, so it's an interesting use case. We've had it around for a while, but it works really well here. And again, your PC doesn't have noise block capabilities. Your PC does not have acoustic fence capabilities. So if you're using your PC for call, you may very well want to use a your, your Edge e-phone if it's sitting there on your desk and make that connection and use that as your speaker and your handset and your headset delivery mechanism because of the noise block capabilities and the uh, uh, acoustic fence capabilities. So we have NFC as well. So we're able to develop, you're able to build applications using NFC. So when you, you know, when you bring the phone close to the edgy, it'll pick up the, you can do things like hot desking and, and pairing your mobile phone, uh, pairing your app on your PC. And then again, using the, the edgy phone as your handset and your headset, your speaker phone uh, to gain some of those capabilities. So. There's a lot of things that we can do with NFC. Uh, it's available, but you're gonna have to write the app for it. It's not, like we haven't written any NFC apps, we just provided the NFC capabilities. So the portfolio positioning, uh, here's how it looks today. Uh, we have the CCX series, which I mentioned, which you probably won't be dealing with a lot in this environment and on your UCAS platform from Skybera. 
The VBX business phones are where we've lived and breathed for the last uh, few years on the platform. And now you have the ability to sell the, the edgy products on the platform. And that's the going forward phone that all of the feature function capability that we do going forward will be on the edgy platform. The VBX phone uh, line will be retired at some point in time, not tomorrow, uh, probably not for a couple of years as we transition to edgy, but we'd like to get down to a single, a single series of handsets in the future. Now, what you're not going to see is you're not going to see any additional handset development or any additional uh, handset features added to, uh, to the Poly lineup. This is the lineup for the foreseeable future. Also want to make mention of uh, the effect that the edgy phones are managed by both of our cloud management services, Poly PDM SSP. Some of you are familiar with that. It's been used a lot in the candy world and then PolyLens, which is the new uh, version of uh, our management software that manages all of our video devices, our headsets. PDM SSP is strictly phones. Uh, Lens would do, would do headsets, and, hand, uh, headsets and, and video devices, and now our edgy products and our, our CCX products as well are on PolyLens. So you're able to, to do cloud management, which is great, especially in environments where you are hybrid, or you are virtual and people are working away from the office like me. I'm a full-time remote worker. I have an edgy on my desk. If I have a problem, I can call my IT guys and they can PDM SSP their way into my phone and they can pull logs and packet captures and they can uh, change, uh, do some minimal configuration changes uh, by PDM SSP and really troubleshoot without me doing much but sitting here continuing to do my work. So it gives, it gives your IT department uh, a really good opportunity to help manage, especially now that a lot of people are away from the office and working at home. Let's talk about Poly Road for a minute. Uh, we talked about the decked uh, uh, solution that we have, small, medium, large, extra large. Uh, but we have multiple phones uh, for this product, the, the 30 and the 40. The 40 is a white phone, really good for um, you know hospitals and people that, that like to perceived sanitary, uh, so that phone works. It also has an emergency call button and it adds Bluetooth on it, so a little more expensive the Edge, Edge B or the Rove 30. We also have a, a B2 single dual cell base, which will give you up to 20 handsets and, uh, and uh, 10 simultaneous calls. And it's a redundant kind of base, so if one dies, the other is still there. Great for the small business environment. And then we have the B4 multi-cell, which will, again, go up to uh, thousands of, uh, of, of handsets. And you can put multiple B4 bases out there with R8 repeaters and really gain a lot of ground. So really allows you to, uh, to, um, um, to create any, kind, any size of in-building wireless network that you want using DEC. The handsets are all IP65, so they're very rugged. And you can see by the, the picture there that that's a sealed keyboard, so they can be cleaned because there's no way for any, uh, any dirt or dust or even cleaner uh, to get into the, to the buttons. Very well sealed. The battery case on the back is very well sealed. You could actually drop it in water as long as you pick it up really quick and get it out of there, but you can spray it and you can get light water on it. That's what IP65 does, uh, rates for dust and, and water. So very, uh, very durable phone. Hey Dave, can you, uh, yes, yes, can, can you go back to the E-Series a second there? Um, sure. <clears throat> there was a question about uh, pricing comparable to the VVX. You know, it was a very cost-effective device and um, yeah, it, I'm not will there be... Talk. I won't talk about specific yeah. pricing is there a we program just, or something yeah yeah we just did a huge price reduction on the edge east uh to align us more with our competitors and they are a premium more of a premium phone so they're a little bit more expensive than the vvx uh but i i i got rid of all of the pricing uh no fair the pricing the pricing that was on these slides i got rid of i don't really like to talk about pricing i would rather have an account management discussion about that so glad to have that discussion yeah. but um you can look on our website uh there the phones are uh, are priced and from all the distributors whether you buy from netx usa or from scansource or td cynics or you're buying from 888 voip or whoever you, they will have the, the pricing listed on their website for it, but you'll find that it's very much in line with the VVX with a little bit of a bump. Not a huge bump, but a little okay. bit of a bump because it's a, a newer phone with a lot more functionality. So right. very well in line um, with our competitors. And 
Go ahead, sir. Um, is there's another uh, two people have asked the same question about okay. the um, will the Rove devices be added to the Candy portal? Um, that is uh, that's a discussion that we've been having. I I don't I can't answer that. You would probably be better off to yeah. provide some some guidance, Sarah. Sarah, because of the changes within Skyvera. Uh, I, I don't yeah. know. Something we were tracking to with the old team, but I'm not sure about going forward. Okay. Yeah, we can follow up on that. Yeah. So, Rogue, yes, we would but love to have e it on the platform. Have, Oops. I'm sorry, oh, Dave. Uh, the the E-Series have been added uh, to the platform, and you can go in and uh, as you add a new device, you, you'll see when you select Polycom that those are listed in there, the, the E-Series. So. Yes, okay. we added those, had those a little bit ago. So yeah, they're, they're definitely there. Um, and we've been talking about row, but again, you've you've had some changes. We've had some changes. So we're you know we're kind of back to that point where we need to discuss how to how to get that on the platform. So glad to do that though. If there's an interest, uh, you know, I would say let let the folks at Skyvera know, and and you know that that's where it's really going to start. Is they're going to have to apply the resources to really get this working on the provisioning server. And the portal. So um, we do. Uh, this is just a picture. Again, it'll help you figure out how to do what to who and with that props. Now, what I, one of the things I want to mention on this slide is the Poly D230 is going end of sale uh, in uh, at the end of the year. So we will not be selling anymore. So let's not focus on that. If you're using it already, great. Uh, if you're not, then then let's focus on the Rove. We do have a, I don't show it here, but we do have a B1 uh, that's come out that would replace the D230. So a B1 with a B20 handset. Uh, handsets will work across all of the bases, by the way, but the but we sell in a kit, uh, a B1 with a, a B1 base with a B20 handset, which is meant to replace the, the D230. So we're going to go strictly rogue, and we're going to get rid of the uh, the the D two thirty. That'll you know, there'll be an end of sale announcement that'll come out here pretty quick. We've got some internal information on it, and it'll come out externally within the next couple of weeks. So let's not focus on that. Let's talk about the uh, the rogue. And before we send these slides out, um, Simon, I'm gonna I'm gonna mod I, well we should just take that that the D two thirty completely off that slide. So I'll I'll provide a new slide. No problem. Yeah, so here's the here's the new uh, low end that should show up on that last slide. So I need to change that slide, but but uh, it's uh, the B1 base station with the row 20. This is going to take the place of the D230, and it just gives you some basic uh, 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 basic calls: 10 handsets and 10 lines per base, and probably uh, what does it say? Uh, four calls uh, per per base. So or simultaneous calls. So meant for the, the that low end environment, you know, the Pizza Hut or a place where somebody just needs a, a, a way for a couple people to walk around and get away from their desk and, and have access to the uh, the phone system. We have a new ATA coming out. Our old ATAs, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we had some supply chain issues. Uh, there was a, actually a fire in one of the plants in Europe that actually uh, was the manufacturer for our chipset for that. And there's just a lot of things uh, that, that happened and uh, with the supply chain over the last three years. So you'll see these new this new footprint coming out, uh, this new ID coming out here in the next uh, month or so. And the good news is it still runs on the same software, the same OB software that the, the other ones run. It really is just a replacement of hardware. And so you'll see the 402 will come out first, and that's going to be two FXS ports, and that'll be out and available uh, sometime in the uh, in the summer, yet yeah, later this summer. And then ZTP, uh, 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 Candy traditionally has a big user of our ZTP product uh, for uh, onboarding phones. So what happens on a Poly phone? And let's see if I have a diagram. Nope, I don't have a diagram. So what happens on the on the uh, ZTP is the you open the box, you unbox the phone, the phone reaches out to our ZTP server. Uh, the 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 Candy folks have uh, created a small configuration file that as soon as that phone reaches out to ZTP, it gets redirected to the provision your provisioning server, and you're up and running and off and running. So we've had ZTP available on our products and our phones for probably 10 years or so. So we've been out in the market for a long time with it. 
but it's a very useful tool and it's uh, very well used by uh, the Skybera UCAS platform. PDMSSP, I talked a little bit about this. Uh, we just want to be able to, to manage devices remotely, and these are the supported devices on PDMSSP. So we're able to really pretty much cover the whole product line as far as what we're able to manage. And when the new ATAs come out, they will also be on uh, PDMSSP. Uh, so we don't worry about that. That is, our, that is our phone management system, and it looks pretty much like this. So, you know, we're, we're able to, uh, to manage all the phones from PDMSSP, and we can actually do an API connection, which we've done with the Skyvera folks. So we have an API connection into the, uh, the Skyvera provisioning server that allows for the updates to PDMSP, what, what MAC address, what the phone configuration, what, what server to reroute the, the call to, because I know there are a variety of uh, provisioning servers out there in various regions. So that's what we use. Um, uh, that's what we use ZTP to is to do that routing and then PDMS to do the management. It's all part of PDMS. And with PDMS, you can troubleshoot, you can configure, you can we have device management tools, so we can reset the devices, we can reboot the devices, we can uh, get packet captures and logging. The first thing that happens when you have a, a, a issue with a poly phone is the first thing that our team asks for is a, uh, a packet capture and potentially some logs and a configuration file, all of which can be pulled from PDMS. So you really don't have to ask your customers to do anything to troubleshoot, troubleshoot issues. We also have a, a full line of headsets from the Plantronics legacy. I'm not gonna go in deep into these, but we are, we were compatible, or we are compatible, or built in call control with the old um, uh, client and I just lost the name of the client. What was the name of the client? Uh, um, Sarah, help me out. <laughs> Sorry, I had it and it just jumped. It just jumped right out of my head. Um, Smart Office, Smart Office client. Not sure where we are with Acrobus, but uh, certainly we've done some work to make the headsets compatible with the old Smart Office client, and we're hoping that gets rolled over into the the new client. But we have a variety of of, of Bluetooth, decked, and wired headsets, depending on what your needs are. And then, of course, the personal video stuff, like I'm talking to you on a Poly P15, which is uh, sitting on the top of that monitor there uh, right now, uh, is what you're looking at. But uh, it's a personal 4K video bar. Sarah actually is on a P15 as well. And then we have the P5. And then we have a variety of cameras that fit into the enterprise space, large room cameras for large video conference rooms that have all kinds of uh, facial tracking and facial recognition and things like that uh, and you'll hear some more we're gonna we're gonna announce a new one here in the next couple weeks uh, and get that out into the market but if you're interested in video at all you know please let us know we can help with that and then quickly these are the last couple slides it's just a matrix of where we are and what we support today so you'll see that we support the edge ease today we don't support the roves we're not going to support the edge V on the platform we do support the CCX that was for a particular customer. Um, we do support our conference phones. Uh, the 88 and 8500s are, are being deprecated. So it'll just be the Trio 8300 and the C60 that'll be supported going forward. We do support the full VVX platform. Uh, if this slide has not been updated, we do support 6.4.3, which we add to because of a chip change to our VVXs. So that's my mistake for not updating the slide. Uh, and then again, we had headsets with Smart Office, and then we have some of our legacy phones uh, that are really end of sale. Uh, and these, again, these slides will change as uh, as time goes on as we uh, continue to move stuff into the EOS EOL. And with that, I am going to stop the presentation and jump back to video in case there's any questions that you have. I think I stopped sharing. Yeah, um, I've got uh, one. Um, <clears throat> there was a question early on, and we did a follow-up uh, while we were uh, working on the webinar here. Is Can you do the um, device key button mapping on the E-Series um, devices? And the answer is yes, uh, you can do those, the E-Series. So again, when I started the original, when we kicked everything off, we said there was a, an open issue after um, the upgrade to 54.1 and those people that use the button mapping and versus um, the device keys versus 
device parameters, yes, device keys are a go for um, Poly E series. So you can do that. And let's see if there's another question that came in. Um, let's see, I believe here. Um, I think we got, we'll follow up on the Rove devices. And um, I don't, there was also a question about the ATAs, if they can be assigned a seat. Yes, they can. You can create them as just kind of a, a generic device. And um, you don't have to, because they aren't like a phone that has a bunch of other features. So any um, SIP to analog gateway, an analog terminal adapter, right, an ATA, um, those can be added as a generic and assigned a seat and a MAC address, and you can uh, control that there. So any other questions, just put them in the chat. We're happy to answer them. Yeah, and I will... Um... I'll clean up this deck a little bit. A couple things I want to add to it. Uh, I may I may add a pricing slide. Uh, it's uh, it's publicly announced, so I I will see if I have one that that fits into the format. And also I'll 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 make sure the um, uh, the matrix is is a little cleaner. Then there's some hidden slides that I didn't go over here that we'll make sure they're unhidden. Uh, but you can use this slide deck as a reference. And of course, what I didn't put on here was how to contact us. Um, so if you want to write down, it's uh, dave.finney at hp.com. And uh, Here, I'll put it in there. the chat. Uh, yeah. I'll do uh, email Dave Finney at dave.finney at yep. hp.com. Is that right? Yep. And then Stephen okay. Chen is Stephen Chen dot, or Stephen dot Chen one, because I guess there's multiple. So he gets to be number one at HP uh, at hp.com. All right, and Stephen with a V, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to leave that. I'll, and I'll I'll update the slide deck too, sir. I'll put I'll put those in the last slide there. Or I'll put them on the first slide somewhere somewhere yes. in there. I'll I'll have our email contact information in there. Great. All Do right. Appreciate um, everybody coming out today and spending time with us hopefully uh hopefully we can do some business together and you know you have our contact information so you can get a hold of us <clears throat> and then simon you want to wrap this up yeah so thanks everybody for uh joining the session today we we certainly appreciate it um, we do have a couple of training opportunities coming up uh so july 18th and 19th we are going to be hosting the support and implementation training class uh, that's the for the support certification um, so that's coming down the pipe and we will quickly be announcing the july um, fireside chat uh, so be on the lookout for that as well um, other than that we wanted to thank you guys for your time um, if you do have any questions feel free to reach out to candy training at skyvera.com and we will be happy to get them taken care of for you thanks everybody thanks everybody thanks